Have you ever heard the phrase from the Bible that God is rich in love and compassion, slow to anger, things like that? Well, we're going to cover that today. It's from Exodus 34, verses 6 through 7. Let's dive right in. So, this set of verses is actually the Lord speaking to Moses. The Lord passes by him or over him and calls or proclaims, the Lord proclaims, the Lord, a God, compassionate and gracious, slow anger and great love and truth or faithfulness, keeping love to thousands, lifting iniquity, transgression, and sin, but not leaving unpunished, this is an interesting phrase we'll get to later, visiting iniquity of parents on their children and on their children's children and on uh, children of the third generation and on children of the fourth generation. If we look at it from a bird's eye view and we break it down in a diagram, we can see that the Lord is the actor here and it's on the lips, the proverbial lips of Yahweh that this sentence comes forth. So this is a self-revelation about who the Lord is to Moses. So it is from the Lord's own voice that he says, I am the Lord, I am a compassionate and gracious God. Compassionate. So, Rahum has to deal with loving tenderly, being fond of, even to fondle, caress. It is related to a mother's love. So, it's related to sympathy and compassion. It designates the benevolent and solicitous God who protects and preserves maternal life, which is endangered. So, Rahum, compassion, but also Hanun. So this is merciful, gracious. It's related to Hanan. So, Hanan has the idea of showing favor, favor someone with, being gracious, or showing compassion. If we look at it in BDB, Hanun, the adjective gracious, only used as an attribute of God, as hearing the cry of the vexed debtor. Here we see in TDOT, its root is grace, first a term of beauty, but it can also be favor. And in Hebrew, the primary use is for pleasing impression made upon one individual by another. And the verb means to be gracious, being used almost exclusively in the derived sense of show favor. And the same dual meaning is found in Greek, charis. So the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow, arech. Here it says the translation's indulgent, which doesn't make sense, but here it is. If you look it up in BDB, long. In the construct, it's erek, which is what we have here. So long, anger. This is dual, afayim. It literally means nose in the singular, or breath, or smelling. But you can see it means anger in the dual. It could be nostrils, it could be face, anger. He's got a long nose or long nostrils, deep breaths. Rav means to be great, numerous, many, great, rich. And when it's used of God, rich in love. Chesed, this is joint obligation, loyalty, faithfulness, lasting loyalty. Used of a wife and husband, also relating to favor, faithfulness, goodness, graciousness. God is abounding in faithfulness. He is rich in faithfulness. He is rich in loving kindness. As well as emet, trustworthiness. It's also constancy, duration, continual favor, faithfulness. Faithfulness is hard to distinguish between constancy, duration, and also truth. Natsar, to keep, keep watch, watch over, keep from protect, preserve. He preserves, he protects his loving kindness. Two thousands, thousand. It is plural, thousands. 
he lifts up nasa this is carry lift up raising of the hand lift up the head hold the head high raise face receive someone in a friendly manner be favorably disposed towards someone look upwards to raise the voice pronounce hold bear suffer notice number 15 bringing upon oneself one's own punishment to atone for bear the consequences this is of the guilt of another to pay the penalty note 18 to take away take away someone's guilt and punishment take away the guilt forgive so it's possible to translate this either way but uh, it seems to be bearing the sense of forgiving to take away the guilt of iniquity and transgression and sin our own misdeeds sin so this would be guilt caused by sin so let's just translate it misdeed pesha so this is an offense concerning property a crime so misdeeds crimes and sin it is from khata khata is to miss the target to lose the way so to miss a mark miss be displeasing to be wrong morally to offend so we have misdeed crime and offense or missing the mark here the vav is probably contrastive but And then we have a PL infinitive absolute followed by PL imperfect third masculine singular. Same word. So this is intensifying in construction rather than treat it literally and to leave unpunished, not leaving unpunished. There is this sense of intensification and really not leaving unpunished and the implication is the guilty and not and really not leaving the guilty unpunished nakha so normally meaning something of the effect of pouring cleansing making clean but this is pl so pl is in itself intensifying and in this case it means to leave unpunished or to declare to be free from punishment but it's negated low low means not so not declaring to be free from punishment you tell me let me know in the comments down below how do you translate this infinitive phrase with the doubling of nakha do you translate it as not leave totally unpunished do you translate it as not acquitting or do you do something else let me know and then visiting Pchav. Pchav. So this has to do with surveillance, but also keeping safe, scrutinize, prescribe. And so in our use here, al participle, make careful inspection, look at, see to something, instruct, command, urge, call to account, avenge, afflict. So avenging or visiting the misdeeds or misdeed of fathers although we'll translate it parents this is plural so of father progenitor i guess there's no sense in translating it as parents we will treat this one more literally there's no indication that it is parents so iniquity of the fathers on children literally on children but we're gonna say their children and on uh, the children of their children and on the children to the third generation you can see shilashim it's from uh, shalosh so it's third but in this case context says it's children of the third generation basically similarly Reve, this is sons of the fourth generation so my merch store got changed. Uh, it was outside of my control, but I was able to uh, adapt. And so now you can get one of the Jesus is Lord items there. Here you see the t-shirt, which I did modify uh, from the previous store. I'm pretty happy with it and I hope you will be too. Check it out, pick one up today. So our final translation, 
And the Lord passed over him, and the Lord called, or the Lord proclaimed, The Lord, a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, great in loving kindness and truth, keeping loving kindness to the thousands, forgiving iniquity and rebellion and sin, but not leaving totally unpunished the guilty, avenging the iniquity of the fathers on their children and on their children's children and on their children to the third generation and on their children to the fourth generation. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, hit the like button and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, but keep watching. I've got a video here for you on translating the Barakah. Until next time.